Everybody, what's going on? I'm Scott Churchson alongside Mr. Brandon K. Uh, we have our buddy Vet here from Stranger Things Season 4. Below, deliberately not listening to any of this, is Mr. Obi Spencer because he has not seen the new season of Stranger Things yet, does not want to get spoiled. So he is literally on mute, I think, right now. Uh, additionally, I have also given our producer extraordinaire, Jeff Valentino, the night off because Jeff actually has not seen the season yet. And while he was willing to get it spoiled, I told him, no, get out. Do not actually get involved with this. Uh, we are going to spoil the liver loving shit out of this season right now, or at least where we got so far. Uh, Brandon, I know you had some thoughts there. So how you doing, sir? I'm doing great between you know, Stranger Things, Obi-Wan, we were just mentioning the Mets before in, in LA fighting back, just, you know, everything's the Rangers are, are still uh, on, on good pace to uh, go past the lightning. So things are going well right now. Yeah. How are you? Good, doing good. So we're going to knock out Stranger Things first and foremost, yes. because again, always just sitting down there, very patient, very quiet, uh, but still on camera. So I don't think he can actually hear anything that we have to say right now. Uh, oh, he can. Okay. Um, all right, never mind, because that, that means I can't talk smack about him behind his back then. Uh, loving the hat, by the way. Fantastic hat. Um, <clears throat> Brandon, go ahead, man. As I'm losing my voice, I'll right off the bat. No, this is, uh, with Stranger Things, This they've done something right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, between, and we forget how long ago the last season was. Mm -hmm. And between the pandemic, I mean, just everything bleeds into, you know, two years feels like just one giant mega year. Shout out to the mega pint mm -hmm. on that. Um, but just it's it's really the, the layoff. And then the way they've done the first part of the season, you get that out of the way, get about a month, you know, six weeks or so until you uh, release the last mm -hmm. of the uh, of this season. It's I, honestly I'm. I'm at a point where I'm willing to put this as a top 10 show of all time. I yeah. mean, it, this is really, this is something special and I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, I think it started a little slow with the Eddie Munson storyline and everything like that, but that was okay. Cause you had to reset the character. It felt in some ways like a, reboot, a little bit. Oh no, I think it was great. But I think it, was, it started a little slow there. Um, it felt a little bit like a reboot of the series in some ways. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, the kids are now, in some cases, 20 years old for the quartet or quintet, if you will. Uh, Joe Keery, who plays uh, Steve, is now 30 years old at this point. They're, so all of them are like six to, to eight years or maybe even 10 years older than the character they're playing. Yeah. You know, and it's funny. I mean, you can definitely see a difference, but I think it's more or less forgivable. They're all, they all have, you know, the thing is, dude, they all have baby faces. Mm -hmm. the, you know, even, you know, the, the older ones that are, that are, you know, mid, you know, mid twenties or, or pushing out no more than uh, older than 30, they still have young baby faces. So yeah. I think with a touch of, you know, makeup and the, you know, the hair, it's, it's easily, you get, you, you, it's no problem. I, I, I've never once sat there watching through any of the season be like, eh, they look too old to play that character. I've never. Um, filmed. I thought. I thought they they played appropriate age characters. I mean, I thought maybe with Will, maybe a little bit, but again, like I said, it's forgivable. It's been three years, you know. So what are you going to be able to do in this case? So, but he had that <clears throat> like almost Harry Potter glow up between Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban, and all the of a sudden he was like a college <laughs> senior. He you had know, that type of, of of a glow up. Credit to them. They did eight Harry Potter movies in eleven years. You know, I mean, that's that you do. That's just nonstop back to back to back yeah, on top that's of that. Crazy. <clears throat> so the fact that they were, like I said, able to pull that off and completely put, you know, put their lives on hold. I mean, with the Lord of the Rings movies, they did three across three years there and spent about three years out in New Zealand. But this, I mean, like I said, that was 11 years of filming for these kids. It's half their lives. Yeah. But they still pretty much pulled it out because, again, they're, they're in a rush because it's even worse there because the entire cast pretty much is all nothing but kids. Right. No, but just that, that glow, he looked from like, like a 10 year old to a 22 year old from years two to years three. Um, but you know, what's really funny. You, you bring up Will and we have Vecna on the screen who mm -hmm. I, I think is really a, a, an incredible villain. Oh my God. He's awesome. So I'm going to zoom in on that real quick. Yeah. I, it's really, and that's all make it. That's not CGI. Yeah. For anyone that doesn't know that that's all, hours and hours of sitting there with the makeup that whole deal and it's incredible 
Actually, the same guy that does all the makeup for him did, um, uh, I was it the Snow King from from Game of Thrones, the the Ice really? Kings, and um, another big character uh, recently. But he's becoming a, a great villain. But you bring up Will and the the glow up, his haircut, mm-hmm. that bowl <laughs> cut. I can't I can't get yeah. over it. And it's funny because I saw a um a meme on social media. And it was a screenshot of his head from all four seasons. Mm-hmm. And it goes, the biggest villain in Stranger Things is Will's Barber. <laughs> and, I, and all the comments, and I'm reading the comments, and you'll probably agree with me. They're all like, nah, his barber is definitely Joyce. It's his mom. His mom gives him a haircut. Probably is, you know. <laughs> I mean, with a, with a character like that, they don't, they don't really have a ton of cash there. So you'd have yeah, to assume no. that it probably does come from, from the mom. But it, it, was yeah. just, it was just funny. But uh, no, Vecna... Ah, uh, you know, there's almost a time. Um, you we brought up Eddie before. Mm-hmm. We thought Eddie was almost going to be like Billy from from the previous season, more kind of mm-hmm. in that antagonistic. I he's super likable. Yeah, you know, it's like it's the quiet nerdy dude. You know, I mean, you're too young for this. Me and Obi, you know, there are certain people that we can remember from our high school that were like, yeah, basically we. <clears throat> Obi, I can see a little Joe Campanelli in that character when the time comes. Um, you know, you remember Joe, you remember Steve actually too. So that's I can see it with that where you had that long haired sort of half geek guitar half playing guy. rocker. Yeah, you know, which um, I which I you know, I play. So I relate to I I find him one of my favorite characters in the whole series. <laughs> and we're there's screen or stills from the trailers coming up where we're gonna see him like playing the guitar, like he's being lifted up. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yep. that you know, That's going to be peak, peak scene right there. I'm, and, I'm excited. And one thing I want to say about that also is that we had, you know, seven episodes so far. We got two left, but every single episode was bare minimum, like 65 minutes. Final oh, yeah. episode was an hour and 40. <clears throat> so right there, that was already a longer season. Forgetting the fact that the last two episodes are going to be a total of about four hours. The final episode You're getting is two, two and a half full length hours. movies. You're getting two full length <clears throat> movies to finish this out. Yeah, it's like they were making up for lost time with the three years that they were out. And they just used that time to fine tune and rewrite and rewrite. And obviously, this is a big Netflix series. So Netflix was just like, here, go. And, you know, I mean, they, sh- they filmed in Bosnia, for God's sakes. <laughs> Yeah, the, all the the scenes over in uh over there with with Hopper, and and you know they bring Mur- Murray and Joyce end up meeting up there. That's, Fucking Murray, man, I love Murray, man. Murray, that, that, Murray is so awesome. great. <laughs> Murray is fantastic. <clears throat> you know, um, I mean, I um like we I mean, I don't want to give away too much here. Uh, yeah, from the, you know from Obi Stanley, but yeah, Murray just brings that cynical charm, and it turns out that he is a black belt too. And he does at one point in, you know, in the movie, in the uh, one episode, he does open up some whoop ass and he does actually showcase some of the skills. He, when he flipped the guy over on, on a plane, I'm like, dude, yes, fucking go Murray. It's such a funny scene. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? He's the type of character where it's like, if you like you're like, I'm, I'm black belt in karate. You'd be like, of course you are. Yeah, like, why you. wouldn't you be like, you're just so out there. Like, why wouldn't you be a black belt? Yeah. Um, obviously at the very end, uh, all the extendable extras had to die, you know, so it was just Hopper and, you know, uh, the Russian, you know, the Russian contact, you know, left, but every, all the other BG had to die, you know, just how the way it works in this case, but it's, there's a lot left in this. I have a sneaking suspicion and I could be wrong, but I don't think we're done with the Vecna character yet. I think he's going to carry over to season five. I mean, there's too much left with two episodes left to finish out his character right now. And I would like to see him carry over to season five. I'd like to see a length of season five, kind of what they're doing, you know, with season four. But you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think they're at a point where obviously they've been aware of him for, you know, what is it? Like at least three of the epi- four episodes mm-hmm. now uh, up to where we are. They're at a point where they're just kind of understanding what the situation is let alone trying to, you know, defeat it or, or in case like that, or try to overcome this. Um, and it's really how it plays back to the, to the Demogorgon and the, the mind flare, how that plays into this. Cause they've only been mentioned in talk. They there's, I mean, mm-hmm. we saw the Demogorgon uh, in, in the brush in Russia, in the cell, but that wasn't really connected to the stranger thing story. Like we know it. 
Um, so I think, yeah, we are far, far from uh, seeing what the uh, what Vecna is. Um, yeah. I mean, even with four, like it's I think it's supposed to be whatever, like four hours or three and a mm-hmm. half hours between these last two episodes. That is a lot of time. But between you got everybody from Russia, you know, Hopper, Murray, they have to meet up the two groups all like we have like four, three or four different groups all mm-hmm. having, you know, all these individual storylines they haven't even connected yet. So I think this is going to be more of a season four, like a two season length part of this story. Not so much the first three seasons where they were a little individual, but they, mm-hmm. but they obviously bled into each other. Well, there was and, like six different storylines going on at the same time. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No. And we, and we got a lot of answers too, about the kind of the first couple seasons or, or at least some things too. So I think we are really starting to piece together this whole situation with the upside down and, and, mm-hmm. and the mind flare and everything like that. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm obsessed with this show. I was at Walmart trying to find their pizza, the surfer pizza, and mm-hmm. they didn't have it. And I almost, I almost went off the deep end on it. Well, Domino's apparently has some sort of pizza with your mind. I don't know. I like, you know, it wouldn't surprise me with technology being the way it is. If you ever saw like uh, uh, Brockmire, you know, the, the Limon app of the future and how it knows everything about you and what you want before you even ask it. <clears throat> so this whole Stranger Things Domino's thing reminds me a lot of Limon from uh, uh, from Brockmire. Yeah, it's cool. And then there's a thing where if you, um, the number that is on the van, the Surfer Boys Pizza van, if you call mm-hmm. that number, you'll get a recording of what Argyle says when he answers the phone. <laughs> and there's nice. something about it that just makes you so, you feel so immersive. Like it really connects you to the show, like something silly like that. Um, yeah, and it's yeah, they they've really done something special with this franchise. And one last thing in this case, because of the fact that the series has a this season has a very very nightmare on Elm Street feel to it. You know, having Robert Englund as as a character, yes. you know, at least the one episode so far was a nice tie-in because it had a lot of that eighties horror feel to it. And that would made that's what made this, I think, a little bit different from some previous seasons there, where they just they went with a certain year, a certain feel that happened in that year, and they're like, okay, we're gonna go in this direction with it. And yeah, I was a little skeptical, wasn't really that that fired up about season four. And then when I started watching it, I saw a few things and it was just like, Yeah, this still works. Yeah. So you know, and right. then, you know, we've so, talked, I did want to say one thing about this birthday, yeah, yeah. this birthday confusion, mm-hmm. Will's birthday. They're mentioning that by the way. I don't believe ahead, them. Like you, you mentioned mm-hmm. before, they had all this time to write out and work and reread and triple read and you know bulletproof everything. I find it so hard to believe that they did that by accident. Okay, Duffer Brothers. Okay. You know, that's I all. think in this case, yeah, yeah. I mean, in this case, if you're wondering actually what um, he's referring to in this particular case. Um, Will's birthday was 100% completely missed, you know, at some point. So that's what I think they're looking at right now. It did, was it missed on purpose? Was it missed by accident? Yeah, you know, yeah, Will, so- Will, 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 Will admit that basically he is, you know, he is in love with his best friend. Very possible. We're waiting on that one, I think. So, but yeah, yes. it's just, yeah. yeah the, the thing is how the, um, for the show started like uh, the very first season, March 21st and Will's birthday is the 22nd. And they mm-hmm. made a whole deal in the very couple, uh, you know, very two episodes, the first uh, of the season. And then this season starts off March 21st. And obviously it's going to take, you know, a day or whatever. So it is going to get mm-hmm. to Will's. So I just find it very hard to believe that it's coincidental that they started the same date. And a lot of people are saying, oh, that's the start of spring break. Does I don't think every school has the same spring break. That's I don't that's not how it works. Probably not. I don't think yeah. every all the schools have that that one week. Everybody's spring break. I, that's mm-hmm. I don't think so. I think it's you know by by school district or by state. Um, so I think there's there's something going on with that, and I don't I don't believe them where they forgot or it was an accident. Fair. It's too. This show is too detailed to do something like that. And maybe they'll make it. They'll figure something out and talk about it come July first when the next half of the season comes out. Next part of the season comes out. Okay, so. Obi, if you can hear us, we're changing the topic off of that. Can you hear us? So let me just drop him a message. He has been actually, like I said, he's been very, very patient on this so far. 
not wanting to get spoilers on. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't. Season. I wasn't trying to give away too much. That uh... we did a solid job on that. Um, I want to switch real quick just for a couple of minutes over to the sports side of things. Um, we are now in this case no longer getting Miggy with it. Uh, getting you know tired of being yanked around by the team in pinstripes. Miguel Andujar, their prize and borderline actually rookie of the year in his own right, had he not lost to Sho- uh, Shohei Otani, has wanted out of New York because they keep the modium down to the minors. Uh, I ran the numbers on this. Um, he actually has a better WAR in 12 games this season than either Joey Gallo or Aaron Hicks, who they're paying buckets of money to, and he wants out. And I don't think anyone can blame him. No, he's he's the scapegoat right now. Yeah, and and yeah. just be just based on contract, he's expendable. Mm-hmm. So that's what they're doing, and yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't blame him, not at all. Yeah. There's, I, I you know for forgetting my Mets fandom and and just there is really not a part of me that would, I mean, if I'm drafted and I have like okay, that's that's a difference. But if like free agency trade, I, there's nothing enticing to me would that would make me want to go to the Yankees. Like I don't I don't really care about history where you won a, a World Series a hundred years ago with uh, a little, little you know these little guys you know guys that you, you don't even heard of. You never heard of. You know and <laughs> you know just, like Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, those no, guys we, you never heard of no, them. No, I'm not you know we like Mickey we, Mantle, uh, Bob Joe Bob, Mu- Bob Musel. You know, but I think I think he's talking about like you know Popeye Pete or you know yeah. You know, no, no, no shoes, you know, Sean O'Flattery or something right. like that. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, Reese's Pieces McGee or some yeah, stupid yeah. guy like that. Or, yeah. Like, I, I don't care. Big, big, don't, big nose, a whole hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, like, we've talked about this countless times. They're very corporate to me. They're very suit and tie buttoned up. Like, I feel like I'm going to a business meeting when I go to a game. They just, they, you know, it's, I, it's, I don't blame him. I mean, mm. yeah. Yeah, I, I basically you're, you're the Yankee that. fan. Yeah, but I did, I, I did want to throw something in there about that. Go ahead, please. I mean, it's nice that he's tired. He wants to change, but you know, it's what we call the contract. And I mean, I don't know how much the CBA changed for the young guys. I know there were some, minor, there were some tweaks to prevent sort of you know the ability to mess with guys' years. I guess they. Once they're up, they're up. And not even if you start later in the season was what they got. So they're closer. But he'll get yanked around until he's got his five or six years. And then, you know, he's no longer available for arbitration. And then he'll see where he can get money. It, you know, it, he does not have a lot of uh, pull in this situation, especially as a guy who, yeah, he might have more war, but he also only has 12 games. Yeah, but the problem is actually they keep benching him. Or sending him down because he has options. And he's like, I want out. Yeah. And Gary Sanchez, you know, who also got out and is actually starting to do slightly better over in Minnesota. He's like, you know what? Good call, dude. Uh, Get out of there. Yeah, it might, it might <laughs> be the right call, but it's not like, you know, he's going to have a lot I mean, of options. That's kind of easy for him to say, though. Yeah. For uh, Sanchez, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, Sanchez got kind of pushed out of town anyway. But Yeah. You know, but it's I, I don't hate that move either. I don't hate the move, you know, to package Gio Rochella. I have a problem with the fact that they took on a 36 year old third baseman at twenty five million dollars a year, full freight, two years. <clears throat> Who uh, has been in uh, how many controversies already this season, and we're not even at All Star break. He's had a couple, yeah, one alongside his teammate, right. and one of racial issues, which made the conversation with the aforementioned Aaron Hicks probably a little awkward in that locker room. You know. <clears throat> You know, I mean, granted, Tim Anderson did refer to him himself as Jackie Robinson, but irrespective of that, it probably didn't go over well. And John, Josh Donaldson was actually apparently very upset with his teammates because his teammates didn't support him for this. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, you know, if you, you honestly, if you're taking a piss on a fire and expecting it to put it out, no, you're making it worse <laughs> to, right. to yeah. make give you a graphic <laughs> metaphor there. But like it's he didn't help himself in, in his own right. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, the thing with Garrett Cole, he said what he said prior to coming to the Yankees. But mm-hmm. then, like, at that point, like, you're already, like, on kind of some shaky grounds, per se, with uh, maybe the, the fan base and the organization. You do your best to just keep your head down, do your job, you know, Belichick, do your job, and just uh, mm-hmm. and just play baseball. And he's, he's, not got a decent, he's got a decent war, low batting average this season, so it hasn't been that bad. 
But again, that contract and that money could have been spent elsewhere in so many different ways, you know. <clears throat> yeah, like the guy who's I'm about losing to, interest in the Yankees, not gonna lie. Like the guy who's about to get a whole boatload backing up that Brinks truck come uh, come these winter meetings and Aaron Judge. Maybe you could have uh made a little uh better decisions in that sense. And maybe we wouldn't be uh, and that's a whole nother uh, uh look in itself. If the Yankees don't sign Aaron Judge in the offseason, it's not about money. It's about their choice. And mm -hmm. it's not about the money they're spending on Donaldson instead. And it's just they don't no. want to spend no, 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 not it's yeah, no, it's but it's now if know, it's because he's like, I don't want to spend another year with Donaldson, now that's a possible like this guy. I'm mm -hmm. good. I'm, I'll, I'll screw that guy. <laughs> screw that. that. That guy, among other reasons, is a, could yeah. be a reason to leave. But I, I don't think they don't sign him because he. They don't have the money. They wouldn't have had the money no matter. Mm -hmm. That's that's the point. They were hoping he would bomb out this year and then get him for cheap. Because look, you're the Yankees. You got to sign him for. He should be the highest play play, player in baseball next year. He even if he's not the best player in baseball. If he's on the Yankees, and that's what that's what's going to be expected, because you know, Pee Wee Herman used to play for them a hundred years ago and won a World Series, right? And there are all, all the reasons that you said uh, negative about them are all the reasons why Aaron Judge should be on the Yankees and the highest played player in baseball next year. No, I I, I agree with that. That's the whole that's the whole yeah. thing with this. He should be, yeah. And I, I I think having him as a Yankee is fantastic mm -hmm. for not just them but for baseball. And I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're handling it uh, in, in the best fashion. He'll go to the Dodgers, who already have a three hundred million dollar payroll right now. No, I don't, I don't think he's going to the Dodgers. <laughs> I, I, I know the whole. Oh, I don't think. I, I said a couple, you know, a couple months ago, sneaky Red Sox. But you know what, right. Uncle Stevie, Uncle Stevie might open up the. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I like the Red Sox because I like him because that's the way to give him the finger. Go to Boston and, and start hitting home runs. Oh, yeah, hitting those over the monster. Whew. Yeah. yeah. Also and great for baseball. And don't forget, Bernie Williams was almost a Red Sox, too. When the Yankees had one, you know, let you know, eleventh hour uh contract that he ended up taking for seven years. Uh, but Steve Cohen, I can see it. You know, just another way to be able to just take a shot at the Yankees in this case here and open up open up the checkbook. I mean, I don't I mean, I don't know whose contracts are coming off the books this year, but could you imagine him and Pete Alonso back to back? And then you have you have Nimmo in center. You move mm -hmm. Marte back to left. Judge in right. <clears throat> Man, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I got chills thinking about it. Now, keep in mind, I think next year they still have to pay Cano though another year, don't they? Well, that's that's, that's fine. We're we're okay. talking about Uncle Stevie <laughs> here. This is the Mark Cuban of baseball now. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's fine. This is this is the Mark, this is the George Steinbrenner of baseball now. Could be, you know. But hey, the team's more like I said. The team is more fun, even though I don't. Were you watching the game the other yeah, night? But where, George was never the uh, richest <clears throat> owner. He just acted like it. He was the most impulsive matters. owner, perhaps. Yes, you know. He basically said that if you guys don't sign Contreras, you're all fired. And then Jose Contreras did a phenomenal job for the two years that he was there, and then he left and immediately won a World Series with the White Sox. Um, Alongside Orlando Hernandez, I may point out. But El Duque. El yes. Miss that guy. Anyway, yeah. So figured to throw that out there because you know Brandon loves the opportunity to just trash trash the Yankees and you know the team from the Bronx there. Okay. So um Brandon, I'm gonna give you a in the box. Ooh, ooh. Can I can I point although, out? although although overall your your overall play, I can't knock. You guys are 40 and you know 18, 17, 20, whatever 20, it is. I can't knock. Yeah. So other Can I that, point out that that John Boy has a has a show on the Yes Network now? His his podcast, Talking Yanks, is now broadcast on the Yes Network. Yeah, it's like ten o'clock on a Saturday night. But kudos to it's him. Random from, time, but it is. Yeah, dude, it's still a time. <clears throat> you know, and to go from this no name YouTuber to suddenly exploding to having his own show in like three years. I mean, that's hella impressive. And then when we were at City Field for NYCFC, they had the Yank they had Talking Yanks on. They had the Yes Network on that's, at City Field. And that's a that's a you know, I mean it was a weekend, but it's still a prime time, you know, of the night, whatever it was, six, seven, eight o'clock, yeah. whatever it was. You know, I, I I found that bizarre. But you know what? Kudos to John Boy on that. You know, like I said. So 
Obi, do you have anything to add, or do you have any? There's a topic that that Brandon did want to go into that's not on the docket, but I want to go into that. No, no, I got nothing on the Yankees. That's enough of the Yankees for one day. Cool. I'm going to close that puppy right out. Uh, we, we are going to be Jason. Go well, do we want to do Obi Wan too? I was going to say we come back to Obi Wan because I want okay. to basically that's have fine. you go into. Um, right. You have that topic up. On. Okay, that can work. Um, no, I was going to say you had a topic that you wanted to go into when it came to the music of Emma Ray. Yes. Uh, it was, it's something that's always kind of been uh, a little kind of thorn in my side as a, as a really, as I, I think I'm a very committed, dedicated music fan. And, and this is across all genres. So it's not just, I'm a huge rock metal guy. <laughs> that's not, it's not just them, those genres. But one thing that always gets me is when an artist released um, an album and the album artwork, whatever it is, doesn't reflect the title of the album. <laughs> and then for some reason, I, it's it's very insignificant. I admit it is stupid, but for some reason, I can't I can't get over it. And I'm and every time I, I see the album, I'm just like it's whatever it is. So like for example of of one that absolutely makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think of like a famous one offhand. Like let's say Metallica's Ride the Lightning. You know, the, the mm-hmm. blue lightning bolts coming down, hitting the chair. Like, that makes sense to me. Ride the lightning. A chair. That, that's perfectly fine. You could, any Metallica album, you could really do that. But then you hit, like, um, mm-hmm. like a, real, a genre that does this a lot, I would say, is country. Because I would say the majority <laughs> of country albums is just them looking in the distance in some way, shape, or form. In a car, on a, whatever the case, standing on the side of a road, whatever. In a field, it doesn't matter. And it could be this random album title, like, you know, the feelings of life or, you know, something really. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But, but Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, you should be walking on the side of a road with a suitcase. Like what's that, your that's, favorite album? Brandon? Like, no, that is not fair. And I will tell you why that is not fair because that, okay. So my favorite album of all time is appetite for destruction. My favorite band guns and roses. And I tell you that is not fair is because the artwork that we in America are familiar with is the, the banner appetite for, you know, guns and roses appetite for destruction with the cross with the five skulls of the band members. That is not the original album artwork. The Hmm. original album artwork actually displays an quote unquote appetite for destruction. And I will pull that album out right now to show you. This is the original album cover for Appetite for Destruction. So we have this killer robot monster feeding on this woman here. Well, there's a little graphic, so I'm going to take that off. But that, see, that that displays Appetite for Destruction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, that was banned in America when the album first came out. <laughs> they had to put it, you know, they had to do the cross. So that is not fair, mm-hmm. Obi. That is not fair. Although it's odd because of the fact that they you try to avoid the religious connotation. Okay, if you say so. But I mean, you, you knew it. Look I it mean, look, look it up. I, I, know, it's been I, well I was a, well done. I lived through it. I don't need well, to look it up. I, I, I was. I'm, I'm, I'm well aware know. of it. But you, uh, you know, they could have chosen a different cover that may that may or may not have been. Uh, that, but that's just a, I mean that's a prime I think one, they had obviously. to do it last minute. That was I think the story was they had to do it so last minute that they really just had to throw that together. Hmm. Um and, uh, and you know obviously the rest is history. Yeah. I mean he's the I, thing, I, I, don't really think... uh, I have no problem if you can make it iconic then it's worthwhile. Yeah. Even if it doesn't necessarily match the you know what's being said. On like the, now look, if album. you look closer at it, for the, for the I mean, title. here's the thing: I, I get like, more more you, distressed by videos that have nothing to do with the song than I do album <laughs> covers. Like that's okay, that's fair too. Yeah, like, what? Yeah, I don't watch music videos so much. Like that doesn't bother me. But but so, if I did, I would absolutely be bothered by that. And I know what you mean. There, every yeah. video I've seen hardly makes sense to what the song's about. Uh, it, it's okay if it doesn't make sense or like someone could interpret it, but there was there was a song, I can't remember which, which what it was. It was, he mentions in the song, it is a man singing and he's singing at multiple times to a woman and it's clear he calls her her and she. 
and then the video, which caused a big uproar, was a, was about a gay love affair. And I was like, well, who cares if it's about a gay love affair? But the song is clearly not about a gay love affair. Why is the video, you know, to me, there was a bigger disconnect from the song and the video to the fact that it was mm. about a, a gay yeah. love affair. So um, that drives me crazy. Like, if you're telling a story with your song and your video is telling a completely different song and there's no way to make the connection, that, yeah, that's crazy. Well, that's how I out. look at the I think that the artwork is you're kind of giving a visual story of whatever the title is, even if the songs are all about, you know, an infinite amount of subjects, whatever the case may be. I just think, yeah, you know. Like for like a country one, if if I, I become like I don't know, moonshines in the moonlight. Like I want to see the picture of you drinking moonshines with the moon out. I don't need to see just like you a picture looking into the distance. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you always have to have that one reflective guy. Yeah, you know, all the, but if you all the same. There was that episode of South Park when they, you know, uh, when they I, I, I guess I'm going to disagree with you. I less qualms with that, that or, or, or not. Yeah, you like, have a problem so with that? Right. House of the Bull, is that, does that match the kids climbing up the... It kind well, of does I would, I would argue that it at least it, it shows some type of like worshipping. Like all they're all mm. laying on the rocks looking up at this kid. You know, I could argue that. So... But see, that was also referenced in Bill and Ted's okay, Excellent okay. Adventure. When they're, when they're, when they're in ancient mood. Greece, it reminded you know. <laughs> By the way, can I, can uh, I just point out that that's I, fine? Okay, all right. By the way, I didn't realize this till earlier, but Manfred Mann, who did the song "Blinded by the Light," wrapped up like a. I didn't realize this, but they also did the song "You Do a Diddy Diddy Dum Diddy Do." Really? There she. Yeah, they they, they were more. So there Manfred Mann was more. Their, Manfred Mann was more known for like early 60s doo-wop stuff and then just sort of reinvented themselves with Blinded by this the Light. Really weird. Because I, when I, I was working out today, I just did like a YouTube playlist of Manfred Mann. And the first song was, you know, There She Was Just a Walking Down the Street. Huh. And I looked it up. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> you know, I did not like, know. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know that was his song. Oh. Yeah, and it's. It kind of it kind of basically soured me on Manfred Mann because I knew there were more from like you know the '70s and all you know that kind of stuff and Blinded by the Light. But then I'm hearing all the '60s doo wop. I cannot handle '60s doo wop. <laughs> I really, really, really hate it. So, but um, so Obi, by the way, probably can't hear me. So Obi, I'm gonna talk louder. <laughs> See, does that help? No, no, no. okay. So, so yeah. So he only hears me, Scott. All right. Well, it's probably because I'm here. Honestly, I, have nothing. I hear you. I, I hear, hear you. Only. I'm yeah. good. So wait, Scott. Scott you hear I, mean, I have nothing to tell. I can hear you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to figure so this one out. The two hit wonder we were talking about. Manfred. Manfred Man. Ah. Uh, yeah. blinded, blinded by, by the light, and then uh, do a ditty. We didn't know that was yeah. his song as well. No, I mean, I, uh, I, I, no. like I said, I was I okay. was pulling up a yeah, YouTube. Yeah, so we got to wait for album covers, out. I see. Uh, I've been looking at some iconic album covers and trying to decide whether they matched. Yeah, you, the I'll, 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 I'll put on my lawyer hat and I'll defend these. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the last yeah. one I got is is Nirvana. Never mind. Okay. Again, keeping towards your your genre. <laughs> okay. Doesn't make I, no. Doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> Okay, it, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Be, it can incredible. be as you know, like don't get me wrong. It they are obviously as iconic as they are, <laughs> not making any sense. So it does go both ways. Okay. All right, I can live with that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think in this case, it's yeah. um, it's I can see okay. where Brandon's coming from, where they go for this artistic look, they go for Why this sort of setup, where it's it? like, you know, it's it's it makes you think, it makes you reflective. Because I think if you're a fan of the, of the group, you're going to buy the you know the album regardless of whether yeah. it's, you know the, the album cover is good or crap. So maybe it's trying to actually hit into some of the other people out there. Like I wonder what this is. So yeah, but, it's just always been anyway. a thing that's kind of just been a thorn in my side. And it's always stuck with me, and uh, you know, but, couldn't think of a better time to bring it up. 
But, uh, speaking of music, I know how you feel about uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame being, you know, the music uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, Appar- uh, apparently, Illinois opened up uh, their own like Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So it's like it, it's like all the bands I guess came from Illinois. They've got their own Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now. Yeah, but they have to call it like the Illinois State Rock yeah. and Roll. Or it's something, something very like. specific. You, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. Trademark that. Yeah, but the uh, overall, they they can uh, they can shove off. For all I care. I mean, I guess I guess New Jersey's got a rock and roll hall of fame, and you'd have obviously Bon, bon Jovi and Bruce, uh, Springsteen. Bruce, Bruce you put in, in there. there, yeah. I'd yeah. I'd argue Get Frank Sinatra. But, he was born in New. I would throw him in there, like just as an early. But he's, kind of he's not rock and roll. I mean, he's not rock and roll. Oh, but, 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 oh, anyway. but Run DMC and Eminem and Dolly Parton, and I <laughs> can I go on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please do. You know. But yeah, it's become yeah. like basically the music hall of fame more than. Hmm? Oh, we do. Are you well, that's because I think that I hear both of you guys now. And I mean, to me, it's like rock and roll to the extent that I think that you speak of rock and roll of in that era of rock and roll. There's very few bands that are putting out Hall of Fame worthy careers in that genre of music at this point in time. And so either mm. either it's done or you expand the definition. And, and that's. So that, that's one argument. Yeah, but you can expand the definition within your genre. That doesn't mean you have to take on other genres like they're stepchildren. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. you know. So, so uh, they, 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 can, they can go to hell. I'm done with them. <laughs> you, you I'm, I'm so done. You go to hell. You really, I'm, I, I can, <laughs> great All museum, right. great memorabilia, but the institution can kick rocks. I'm done with them. I, here's what I can't figure out. Cleveland apparently is the most stressed out city in, in the United States. I don't know how. Because they're all angry you know? about I mean, the Hall the of Fame. They can't get it right. And the Browns. Well, obviously, well the Browns. You, I was going to say, you got, well, I mean, dude, now, I'm just, I don't want to go, I can go into this maybe to a small degree. I'm going to leave it to you guys if you want to discuss this or not. I know JD is just not. That's why I'm not bringing it up tonight. But a 24th woman came forward on Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I saw that. And, now, and now there's some questions about there. Uh, are, is the NFL going to actually ban him entirely? In which case, the Browns will look unbridledly stupid for trading everything they had to pick up a player that may never play a down for them. Look, here's what I will say about this. Let's say the NFL investigates. Let's say they find that 10%, that's two and a, two and a half of these cases are legit. Mm. So we'll call it three. If they find that three of these are legit, that's still 12 games. That's still four four games. Yeah. And, you know, the reason this, this last woman came out is she's like, they're going to suspend him on the million-dollar contract this year. He's going to make 24 next year. So the NFL is going to be incentivized to do six games for each one. Like, he mm. could be – or or if they decide each one is – like, I can't imagine he's going to get back on a football field. I, I just don't, don't see it happening because – because I can't – if the NFL just goes, we're going to suspend him for six games, then they're going to have to defend six games. If you, oh, Are you saying that 24 women is six oh, – are you saying – then they're going to have to say how many cases they found credible, which is a whole, whole other thing. They're better off mm-hmm. just going a game, a, a game for each. That's 24 games, see in a season and a half, and good luck Browns. Uh, Baker Mayfield then wins the MVP and signs somewhere else. That, that would be the hysterical thing. <laughs> But here's the thing. If you suspend one game for everyone that's credible, I think that's going to be coming off extremely weak on the NFL's part. Yeah, I think they're right. going to be wanting like one, they're going to be wanting like one year for everyone at a minimum. Because well, you remember, you have to also deal with the groups that are going to be outraged and what Twitter is going to do. You know, and I'm not saying I'm, I'll be honestly, I think one game would be very weak for that. But also from an NFL standpoint, if they decided to do one game, they're going to take some serious backlash on that. Oh, I'm, I'm just using that as the minimum, Scott. Like, if you do one mm-hmm. game, you're then you're at least you're getting them into next season. But then they have to say that whatever number they come up with, they're going to then have to attribute that to how many women that they find credible. And then if every woman mm-hmm. they find credible, then you're going to have to explain well why only that it's why only that many games per each. So I think that yeah, I think it's going to be tough for him to play again. I think. The Browns didn't do him any favors by signing to the one million this year. I think that put more pressure for a longer suspension on the NFL. Mm. Because yes, 
there's a lot of people. The NFL continues to grow fans because the NFL decided before any other sport that they were going to try to add the female market to their market share. And now they have to make sure that that's not a, a demographic. They are totally offending by giving him zero games for 24 accusations. Even the trade itself was tempestuous, to say the least. Yes. Yeah. Because, because it, it, I don't think you can do a game. That that's yeah. that's I that's insulting. Because if you look at look at all these other look at look at the Zeke situation with Ezekiel Elliott a handful of years ago. What he considering what the allegations are for Deshaun and what they handed down to Zeke, mm -hmm. you cannot do anything less per mm -hmm. accusation. Fair. That means we are talking now two year ban. One one two year ban, three year ban, lifetime. I mean, that's they're gonna have to start having these conversations. Look at what Michael Vick and also and or Plexico got. I mean, we could any any of these. I mean, obviously the the exception is Ray Rice. Mm. Um, but I mean, less than that. Ha has there really been such a for forgetting the the legitimacy or illegitimacy of all of this? Just the overall spectacle of this. Uh, it's, I mean, I, it's it's really becoming, I, and I would not be surprised if number 25 comes up in the next day or two. Mm. I mean, I, I didn't think we were going to get to 23, or what is it? Tw I thought it was 23 to 24, you know, getting the, the 24th one on. Or, or what is it? It was two in the last couple weeks or whatever it was. But, I mean, it's 25 next. I mean, uh, it's... They really have to start having these really serious conversations. They do. They 100% do. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, actually, in this case, I pulled it uh, just so I can actually put that up there. There. Got that. In. <laughs> because I finally got to it. I'm putting the picture up just to have it up there. Um, any final thoughts on that before I get rid of the picture that's up there? It's, I mean, we'll see. I, there's nothing yeah. else really I, I can say about it. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So we're going to move on to the final topic of the evening. In this case, we've got about 15 or so minutes left. Uh, this is something I believe Obi uh, can actually talk about. Um, he is, Obi is one that actually has actually seen this. Um, Brandon is one that saw it. Oh, I, thought, I thought it was funny, so no one else will. But fuck it. Um, there. Over to Obi-Wan. So, oh, man. OB, do you want to start this off? Yes, you should. Oh, <laughs> Brandon, you want to we start this off? We OB, we uh... <laughs> All right, so he's, he's made aware. Um, so, yes. Uh, so, they, oh. Do you want to just put your comments down below? <laughs> I'll read them. <laughs> That we we we're getting something special now with with yep. this show. Yes. I think yes, what what they've done has really been really it, it really connects the I don't want to say the older but like the 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 second generate you know the second era fans with today's and it's just bringing everybody back. Um, and it's crazy to think that this is the first. Um, Lot, you know, we, we, we don't get that many live screen action, you know, of Darth Vader. Um, so between Rogue One and and this, I mean, mm -hmm. this is really yep. all we've gotten since the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. So to really see, really the the Darth Vader right as he became, I think is really great, and they they've done a tremendous job. Uh, just from Episode Three, just the poetics of that episode alone. Mm -hmm is unbelievable all right so, so let me yeah. so let me go first of all yes first thing please. is please <clears throat> my whole desire for obi-wan kenobi the show and i knew it wasn't going to happen as soon as i saw the um the trailers has always been let's just remake kung fu and that was mm. my desire kung fu the legend condition continues the story is almost lines up perfectly without the issue of a white man playing a someone from China. It would have been great. Again. He could have literally <laughs> taken some of the scripts right out and just re, that's what I wanted. I thought that would be great. Um, 
but we don't get that. There's still a chance that we'll have Jules uh, doing that, but you know, we'll move on from there. So I was a little already concerned. And then, you know, I know that there are a lot of Hayden fans out there and a lot of younger fans. And I even know Scott, very happy to have Vader back in it. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping if we were going to have Vader and him actually meet, we could wait six episodes for them to actually meet. Let's build up to it. Because now after this, we know they have to meet again because there's no question I see Luke Skywalker and him. <laughs> like I'm just using one hand uh, that yep. he is not the master at all. So now we have to meet a second mm -hmm. time. That bothers me. The scene that where Vader walks you. down the street, that was fantastic. The rest of the episode mm -hmm. around it was atrocious. We're going to meet some stormtroopers, but not tell them. Then meet some other stormtroopers. Then, hey, yeah, let's point this out. We can track that we know the Millennium Falcon blasted out of Tatooine, but we don't know that this is the same ship, by the way. And it's only got three possible locations, and we're monitoring all the ports anyway. They get to the fence. He literally could have lifted Leia up over the electric fence and walked around the outside of the most ridiculous laser fence in the history. They could have walked around the fence. They could have walked around. The fence. <laughs> that, that okay? Yes, that that is true. And I did think to myself, like Obi Wan, bro, just like walk around that shit <laughs> like it said it did feel so obvious to me yes okay yeah <laughs> okay they all should have run down the tunnel which would have by the way been better had they escaped for the building up of vader Br and made vader just even meaner like <clears throat> like that part like i said was great him just like i'm absolute evil just i don't you're not who i'm looking for throw you across the room and could have killed mm -hmm. another inquisitor just for the sake of it He's going to so one of these one of these inquisitors is going to die. But from him, yes, he's gonna kill one of them for sure. Probably yes. And so like that all kind of, I just thought it was I did not like that episode. Um and at first I thought it was the only one. Fortunately I found other people out there who did not like the episode. I Oh, we're talking Star Wars here. There's always gonna be hate. And yeah, yeah. Like, hey, hey, um, this is like but I, dude, shut up. Like I, like look I just, what we're getting right now. Like just enjoy it. I loved by the way, Scott, I know you uh, you posted here on our stream pump Twitter. I I did love the intro of him being put together. Like that yeah. part of, like the Vader stuff and the Reva stuff, I liked all that. But the and I even liked the Leia stuff, but Mm -hmm. Obviously, we we got him to rock bottom. Now he's going to build himself up, and that's how they got him to rock bottom. But it was just maybe you could do the whole thing with one of the Inquisitors instead to get him to rock bottom. Um, mm. It just I didn't I didn't I did not enjoy the fight. I did not enjoy Vader just letting them go. He literally the Vader that they showed could have grabbed all the robot Ben and and, and the girl this. And drag them right back into the flame via the force, which the Vader we had seen. The incongruities of how badass he was walking down the street, destroying Obi-Wan in the fight. And then, oh, there's some fire. And I can't just drag him back into the fire because one of my stormtroopers got shot. It was just, come on. Like, because they, and if they just avoided the fight, that wouldn't have had that problem. You know, from my understanding on this, the reason he didn't is because basically he realized that Obi-Wan was trash and that he can continue to torture him. Maul did the same <clears throat> Maul did the same thing to Obi-Wan during Star Wars uh Star Wars. You know, when he killed Satine, he should have of actually killing Obi-Wan, but wanted to let him suffer. I that's the theory that a lot of the fans like Star Wars theory and, and Tus and all the rest of them have when it comes to it. He's like, I can go back and I can torture this guy whenever I want, and I plan to. Okay, so so, so their 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 theory was instead of this being and sometimes you know people look at things and they go well it's bad in Star Wars verse, universe and other times they look at things and go it's bad as a movie or a piece of art I think this was bad as just if you didn't make this Star Wars and you saw this mm -hmm. villain walking down the street with all this power and then you saw that and you'd be like that was weak that was that was weak applesauce mm -hmm. to save to save the hero. So in the Star Wars world, we'll go with that, and we can use that as a fix for why it works in Star Wars. But that 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 escape was weak, and the need to even thematically have them in that situation where you could just built up Vader instead on his badassery, mm -hmm. I think would have been better than making them meet 
And I get that he's weak. And I get that he's Ben Kenobi now and will turn into Obi-Wan by the end of the show and then be Obi-Wan as Ben as opposed to actually being Ben. Like, I get all that. And I get this is rock bottom. And that's what you have to do. I just would have preferred a different way than this one-handed Vader versus Ben Kenobi situation here. I mean, like, that is how he played with Luke. And that is not mm-hmm. Luke. That is Ben Kenobi. That is the guy who's supposed to be a more powerful Jedi than even Vader is. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll come back because in, you know, about what, two years before A New Hope, he kills Maul and he kills Maul quickly. Yes. So he will come, he will come back and become more powerful. So I think right now it is, like you said, rock bottom. Um, I loved it. I thought seeing, you know, hearing James Earl Jones's voice again, seeing him built in a way that was not done really in anything, including Revenge of the Sith. You saw the or entire manufactured process. Was that? Or Rogue One. Yeah, yeah, but you saw the entire manufactured process, the arm going on it. You saw so much more in that episode than you'd really ever seen previously. And then to hear the voice again, to see the intimidation, you know, to have him talk to Reva about being Grand Inquisitor. It was just something that brought my seven-year-old Return of the Jedi self back. And it, you know, like we did we did the watch party, me and D, uh, the other day. And I was even saying, it's like, I feel like a kid again right now. And it was just so cool to see that. And I don't know where they're going to go. They, the series may not be able to basically match what my hopes for it is going to be. But you know what? Just from that episode alone, I can walk away happy with this series. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah I think the mirror images and poetics that they paid homage to episode three, Revenge of the mm-hmm. Sith, to kind of really this show the, three, yeah. like I said, show the mirror image. <laughs> it's episode three of the series mm-hmm. dragged through the fire. They, they, they fought, they, they could have, could have killed it. Probably, you know, one mm-hmm. of them could have killed each other in episode three. There, there is still like, we are still, we have to understand at, at this point in Vader's exist, Darth Vader's existence, there is Anakin still in him. This is, he, he is, mm-hmm. he is prime Vader, but he is still early young Vader. So there mm. is a sense. Yes, they obviously are going to meet again. I think seeing Ben or Obi, you know, to him, Obi-Wan um, for the first time in, in since the battle of Mustafar, there is, there is that sense of, of Anakin and human within Vader still. And just, yes, obviously he could have just, duh, you're dead. Like, of course, mm-hmm. But that's not what that's not the character that Vader is. If you See, look, no, no, that's no. where I disagree with you. Vader should be at peak. E- Vader should get, and he and it would make sense, especially if you watch the you know as you have Star Wars through Jedi. He the good is brought out in him by his son and his, and and his existence and his desire to pull it out. He, this is still super angry, Vader, and he says it. What have you become? What you have made mm-hmm. me like that was a great line. That no, it was, was. it was spectacular. But that's why he should have been pure evil, which is why I will at least buy into because it's Star Wars and because of poetic that he's doing what Maul tried to do, which is of course mm-hmm. essentially what every bad guy does. We'll just set the trap as opposed to just killing him, which is okay. I so think- okay, you're going to do that, but I you still did it. You did it via a way that just didn't play out. It didn't play out the same way as you brought him in as the baddest of the bad Vaders you've seen, and probably even including Rogue One. This was Mm -hmm. evil Vader. And then you just let him stare and watch. And okay, maybe he wants to torture again, but then he still has to find again. And he still has to count on Reboot again. And yes, this is his one thing that he's focused on, so sure. But boy, but isn't there a part of okay? If the part forget the Anakin part, isn't there a part of Vader that wants to identically reflect what Obi Wan did to him that he is now doing to to now Ben, dragging through the fire, leaving him to die, all that stuff. It, it it's but a mirror he, image, and I, I right, understand but he the, the did it. He did it, and he did it in such a way that was not related forget the greater star wars universe and the great 
Well, it's not the, though because it's very. But no, I'm saying if, if you this. do it, if you don't, if you do recall it, then it gets even worse. I think. But if you don't, mm. you just think this dude was super, super bad, literally throwing people all over the place with the force, in unabated evilness, walking down the street. But I and think taking then, the context out of it, you're, you're so. But it. then, so so then, if I take the if I don't take the context out of it. Then when she, I can't remember the character's name, is it Tila? And the robot come, it's, well, the robot's smashed. It's, she's dead. And it's, it's a, leave him in the fire to burn. I mean, that's that's the character they built up okay. on that street walk, which was fantastic. Yes. yes, fair. But now, all right, but it could simply be now, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and it could be, it's so obvious. You can't erase what they did in the first Star Wars, and now the whole universe is all messed up. You can't do that. Obviously, they meet again in episode four. We you know mm-hmm. we know that we know Ben becomes older, so they yes. have to. You you have to do it. You kind of have to do it this way. So right. So that's why the decision to have them meet is the bad decision. Let him run away. Let him reach rock bottom some other way. And then by the mm. time he meets Vader over six weeks, so he still had to hit hop, bop, rock bottom there. Ben Kenobi died. And Obi Wan Kenobi's reborn. Now I don't know how you make that happen. That probably it's too hard. Never, it's too hard. It's it's mm. it may be too hard, or it may have been required more creativity than having that scene where like Vader. I mean, you're right. That is literally the Vader on Obi on young Luke Skywalker, one handed. Like he never one handed Vader is is it is. It, is is an insult, Vader. That is Vader being like, I'm, I'm not, not even trying it either. Yeah, it's it's you know, to you so know, I, a hand and a foot tied behind his back, and it's still no issue. Like it's right. that, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was it. So that that if, if you found a way to make him reach rock bottom without that fight, let them continue to march to each other to the to the final battle that they are going to have, because obviously this ain't it. Because there's no way he would look at him and go, I was you know. You were the man. Now I am the master. That, 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 nah, right, last right, time we met. Says, right. Yeah, last time we met, I dragged you through fire, you freaking wimp. This ain't going to go any better. I think he said last time we met, you were still the master and I was the learner. The circle, the circle is mm-hmm. complete. Now I am the master. Yes. Yeah, something, something the powers have made you weak, old man. Yeah, so. it's, yeah. All right. So, so we but but to Scott's two point, out of three actually like this. I, I I can I could see it. I see it. But but I think yeah. But Scott's well, point no way- in about the beginning of the episode, the like that part, a hundred percent buying the James Earl Jones voice of putting him mm-hmm. together. Yeah, yeah. The, yep. the nastiness of him. If they had just figured out a way to make him run down, run, like without changing any of the episode, but run down the corridor with Leia and her. And have that somehow turned into rock. Maybe Vader kills everybody there, all the innocent people, and he takes that upon himself, and that's his rock bottom. Just keeping the episode as, as much the same as it was, because uh, then after all this this stuff that really bothers me, then you look back and you go, "That stupid fence, and why two sets of stormtroopers?" And that, that other <laughs> yeah, thing, no, 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 what, no, what bothered me the most about that whole you need the fence and get a stormtrooper cut in half. <laughs> The whole thing, yeah. You the decapitated stone. Walk a just just walk around the fence. Okay, that's obvious. But mm-hmm. then then the other part where they're introducing him and he says hello. And we're sitting there like say it. Say it. Say hello there. And he doesn't say it. And I felt so blue balled. <laughs> like it was ah, it was there like like a home run, dude. It was teed up for you. <laughs> They might at the end of the series. They but it's I hope. I, they, uh, they, uh, please. Right. If there's right. one thing, give me a hello there. That's all I want. I want to hear it. Hello there. I told you, I I, I was willing to get fired uh, a few years ago on Halston when you and McGregor was on there, just so the I had the opportunity <laughs> to say hello there. I would have been like, all right, I'll take the. I'm up fired. I get it. That's fine. I was yep, worth it. No, that you is know. that is yep. That is a loss you carry proudly. That's a win. That's, yeah. You know I what? Know. I, that's not a loss. That is a win. Because he was actually, as soon as he was done with Halston, which was right around that time, he was immediately starting production on Obi Wan. So he was in, he was probably flying up to Boston. Oh, he was he was, wardrobe, he was in he was in hello there mode. Yeah, Ooh. and I was I would have been like I'm I'm fired I'm getting blacklisted. But you know what? So got a story it. forever. Hell yeah. yeah, so worth it. Hell yeah. yeah. I can't argue that. Yeah. I would have done that. But it's worth it. 
Yeah. So, all right. I figure we can start wrapping this up. It is eight o'clock at this point. Uh, do you gentlemen have any final thoughts before I start randomly plugging our other stuff? Nope. Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'll plug my stuff first. My, plug yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll plug my non-stream punk I'll plug, stuff, I, can, I can plug. Which is, of course, the uh, drinking from the garden hose where, uh, a spoiler alert, next Friday's episode is great because uh, we talk about Obi-Wan. Ed mm -hmm. talks about how he feels about whether Obi-Wan should meet up with Vader, not knowing that I just watched the episode where Obi-Wan met up with Vader while he's talking to me. And you should Listen to hear me <laughs> so you, so handle you, that so like you're a playing problem. dumb in the situation. Maybe they do. Hmm, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's that's funny. Perfect. Uh, Brandon, yeah, do you have tomorrow, anything you want to Tomorrow, uh, 1 30, home court press, my all NBA coverage of uh, of finals and how that's been going on uh, Spanglish World Network. Zingo TV, channels 249, 250. Don't miss it. Yes. And then after that, at 4 p.m., three of us will be back alongside Mr. Uh, J.D. Walker uh, for the Sports Den at 4 o'clock. Uh, then at 7 o'clock, we've got Tales from the Film Set. So me, Ryan, and Davion are going to be covering, uh, probably talking a little bit about Jurassic World, Dominion on that. Uh, also, movies that came out in the last 25 years that, you know what? If you came out with a sequel, it might not suck. So, <laughs> Beetlejuice. More than 25 well. years. That? Beetlejuice. <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> Dude, we said all we need... To quote Kevin Smith on that, you know, we pretty much said all. Did we we really said pretty much everything we needed to with the first one. Must we go Hawaiian? Because there was actually supposed to be Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian and it never transpired. Uh, Kevin Smith actually had the option of being able to direct that movie. Check out his video on that; it's freaking hilarious. So, good stuff. So, so all right, gents. So I appreciate it. Thanks as always. Um, like I said, if you need any questions, you want to drop us a message, uh, reach out to me at streampunksports at gmail, stream, uh, tales from the film site. Advice. As always, streampunkent.com is the mother is the mother site. Thanks as always. Take care. Be awesome. Stay awesome. You guys are awesome. 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 Awesome.